Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo. In this part 2 tutorial we're going to be taking a look and a deep dive inside of Blender and see how I created this entire scene from scratch and how we went about creating the shaders and all the passes that we, in part 1, composited to get the final look of these two style frames. If you missed part 1, you can always go back into my channel and watch the video where we discuss in details how to do the compositing and you can get all the project files and passes in the description so that you can follow along. Without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So, here here we are inside of Blender. For those who are coming from Cinema 4D, I have put a separate videos onto how to get you started in Blender and what you need to know coming from Blender to Cinema 4D and why I made this jump from Cinema 4D to Blender. That is out of the way. Let's get started. So the first thing first is I don't need any of this. So I'm just going to go and delete all that. And what I need to do is I need to go to File, Import and import all the cape patches that I've already prepared for this tutorial. So if you want to follow up with this tutorial, just make sure you go in the description and download the project files from the link. Now let's uh, bring in the kit bashes. Now that the kit bashes are in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take each one of them and try to place them here. So we have some roofs and we could even use this for um, the ground and then I have some ground boxes here uh, from the kit bash and then I have two kind of pillars just so that we can have a little bit of difference. Now I'm just going to go and start creating this. I'm just going to go and uh, cut directly into finishing the scene and then I'm going to walk you through it. Now here is the scene fully done. I also imported the spaceship. Now what's going on here as you can see it's not really symmetrical and the reason for this is because I just wanted to place it exactly where I needed my camera to be. I put really different kit bashes just to get the wall going on like a garage thing and since I didn't have the walls that are like this so what I needed to do just to break off a little bit that symmetry what I needed to do was create these walls that are very different from this one and so I just brought these kit bashes instead and just put them one in front of another and then later on in the tutorial I thought that I would be using this garage thing but that would be an animation so what I would do is I will just animate this coming up or just coming in. The reason this is not in the center it's very simple. One I was thinking in the animation what would happen is you know people would be able to get up here and also the biggest hurdle why I put this is because one of my shots I needed to take this from a top view and if I had the roof on top of me I wouldn't be able to get that particular view. So that's why the ship is down. Now let's go and create a camera. Obviously I'm just gonna go shift A create a camera or just go into add camera. It's gonna put it in the center and all I need to do is control alt zero and it'll be able to place it here. If you don't have your view framed on your camera just make sure you press home and then your view is just gonna if your view is like this press home so that you can zoom in to exactly what you are looking at. Normally if you try to move around the scene that's not gonna snap so we're just gonna go press N to bring up this menu. If you don't have N in your keyboard you can just click that go to view and make sure you go to camera to view. Now if I try to move the camera is actually gonna move with me which is pretty amazing. Now I'm just going to go and try to find exactly what I want. That's great. I'm going to go inside of the camera properties and make sure that it's not 50, 50 millimeters. I want something that is going to bring me that polcha dice and that microscopic view and make things look way bigger than what they are. And that is something that is like 150 or even 105. And that would bring you that view that I was discussing on part one of this tutorial. Cool. So this is like a polcha Dyson view kind of. I'll just make sure that I frame it correctly. I think this would do. I'll just zoom in a bit. Cool. So this would be something that I would go for. All right. And then once I'm done, I'll just hit that off. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Usually what I would do normally is I would just drag this in here and just like keep this here and make sure that all this is off just so that I can just focus on how it looks. But if I go into something like this, I'll be able to see how it looks. And then on the other side, I'll be able to do all kind of stuff without having to worry so much about how my render actually looks like. Now let's get a little bit into lighting because everything is so dark and we need to take care of it. All right, so for the lighting, I'm just gonna go here and switch into shader editor and go into world object. All right, so we're gonna start with this, which is not really giving us a lot more. So what we need to do here, I'm gonna go inside of the word properties so that I can create an HDRI here. So I'm just gonna put this one here and make sure that this is just like that so that I can just focus on this one or maybe just even drag it until I finish and start shading. Now. Here is what we have on our EV. I'm just going to use EV because it's fast for recording tutorial. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and replace this with an image texture. So I'm going to make sure that it's world. I'm going to go bring in image 
texture. Also, you can get this by going to add source and then image texture here. But shift A is kind of a shortcut for this one. Now inside here, I'm just going to go and put this color here. It's going to turn to black because there is nothing loaded in. I'm just going to go and load in an image that I use for this one. Cool. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to see much here. So I'm going to do control T. If you don't have control T, make sure that preferences add on node regular is on so that you can get this shortcut you could create it if you want it just takes a lot of time to do it while you could just shortcut it now normally you will see the normals but since this is an HDRI it doesn't make sense that it's normals or UV so I'm just gonna go into the generator into the actual UV now if I rotate you'll be able to see this rotating cool so I'm just gonna make sure I think this is way too high so I'm just gonna go and make sure that it's somewhere around you like this so I'm just trying to get the right lighting here so this is all about feeling and this is what I talked about and this is it cool so this is something that I would be kind of okay with I like it but my problem here is that I can see my HDRI and I don't like it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go inside of even one of the things I'm gonna increase the reflection so I'm just gonna put this on so the reflection is better and uh, I could even have refraction if I want I can have ambient occlusion to have just better shadows one of the things that I need to go is film and then do transparent and now everything is just going to be transparent which is perfect cool so now when I render this I won't have that thing in the background which is exactly what I want now let's see how I created this shaders normally when I want to create something metallic it's pretty simple all I need to do is for example select this I'll have this metallic I just created a new one just so that you can follow with this tutorial and whatever this material we're gonna apply you can just apply it to everything else here in principle BDSF to get something that is reflective all you need to do is increase metallic into one now we increase the metallic into one but everything is just reflective so it's not really nice what I need to do is if I could have a little bit of kind of a little bit of roughness a little bit of a grunginess and to create this grunginess there is nothing simple as doing that so I'm just gonna go and create an image texture and I know that whatever I do I could just plug it into roughness and that will automatically calibrate what is rough and what is not so I'm just gonna go into imperfections here and I could just bring in this one or let me see I could just actually just bring in this one and then I could just put this into roughness and then I'll be able to see this here cool and this tropic is one all right so that's it's looking pretty good if I think that this is better all I need to do again remember just like we did for the HDRI control T now that we have the Wrangler there and then I could just select all this and then I could just you know control how big this is or how small this is so I'm just gonna go do this and I'll be right back all right so everything is applied into the scene unfortunately in the blender there is no shortcut that i know of so if you know how to apply the blender material to all of these at once please let me know because so far i as far as i learned you have to do this manually now what i'm going to do is instead of repeating this manually every single time i'm just going to create all the shaders here and then when i create them it will apply to all of them so let's create the techie shader so the first one image texture bringing it here i'm going to go into substrate texture and this is a Toros Kose pack, so you just can get it, it's pretty cheap. And I'll just put it here and then everything will just update. So if I try to go like this and put it at home, just put it home, yeah, cool. So it looks pretty good and then I can just render this. Cool, so this is when it comes to techie. The next thing that I need to do is called wireframe. I'm just gonna put wireframe here, pop up. There we go, wireframe. Then I can have this ready to go for wireframe. Next one I need is a little bit of masking. So for example, for this one, let's just say that we wanna apply this, but we don't wanna apply this to all the sides and we just wanna have that mask noise that we created, that pass. So I'm gonna create a new noise texture. I'm just gonna go and put the noise texture here. I'm just gonna make a little bit of room for this. So I'll just take these two, put them here because we're done with them and we'll only activate them when we wanna render later on. So cool, all right, well, let's just focus on this one. So noise texture. So I'm just going to go to this, put this like this. So this is what we have. So far, I think that this is a little bit too much. So I'm just going to scale it down. All right. It's something like this. I think this is pretty good scale. The roughness, I'm just going to add one there. And uh, I think this is pretty cool. The only problem here is that the blacks are not too black. And to do that, obviously, just like any other software and shading, I'm just going to do a color ramp. Cool. And all I'm going to do here is just bring in the black a little bit in the middle so that I can see them. You see that? Cool. That's, that's pretty much it. All right. So got this. Great. Now I'm just going to take this, put it here. All right. Now for the HUD plates, which are the last things we need to do, what I did was I went inside of After Effects, I imported Toros Cosa's textures and then I just went and I separated them 
into different layers. So what would happen is I would have, for example, this layer, and then I would render this layer as well with alpha and then layer, layer this in alpha. And then all I need to do in Blender, import this and just put them into a plate and render them with alpha on a black background and then just layer them on top inside of After Effects, just like what we saw. All right, and then I created a few other things like this. All right, and then this. And then I just layer them on top inside of Blender. Now let's start by bringing in the floor and the roof textures. And for that, what I needed to do was I went and I created a plane. All right. And then I scale it holding S. I scaled it up. And then I went inside here and then brought it a little bit on top. Cool. Now, all I need to do is go inside material, which is here, and then make a new material. And then I'll just go in here, make a new. And normally, if I just turn it on, this is what I'm going to have. I could actually just go here and just put this just so that we can have an idea of what's going on. Cool. Now, inside of here, I don't need any of this. So I'm just going to go and delete this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add an image texture here. I could actually add an emission. All right, so just put the emission. Now it's just going to be lighting everything. Now I want this emission color to actually be part of this picture and then inside the picture I'm just gonna go and bring in one of those pictures that we talked about but first let's start with the techie and I'm just gonna go and rotate this 90 degree I like this cool now the emission is a little bit too low so I'm just gonna go and try to increase this a bit something like that cool now if you don't want to render this alone like this as a plate alone what you could do is we can just delete this bring in that principle that was in the beginning cool. do it and then I'm just gonna go and put this on base color and then I'll be able to see it and then I'm just gonna go and put it on emission so now I see it a little bit so now I could add a little bit of emission but the problem with this one is that it's not really transparent and to get the transparency all I need to do is just go and put it on alpha so all I need to do is go back in here and uh, switch this into alpha blend now I'll be able to see through it all right so that's how it's done now I could just go and duplicate this so shift D move it alongside this one great and then all I could do is take both of this shift D and put them on top all right if I needed like a below view that's how you could actually have that great let's go back into the camera this is looking great so far now the only problem that I'm seeing here is it's a little bit too dark so let's just go and light this up a bit so the first light we're gonna try to create is a little bit from from here so basically like the tree point lighting but we're just gonna add a little bit more lights just for the details of the render I'm not realistic but again this is a cell frame so left right top and in the back cool so I'm just gonna go and make a new light just gonna put an area put it up put it up and this is where two scenes will make some sense I'm just gonna go here and drag this go into the camera here home that's great now I'm just gonna turn this off and then I'm just gonna go and put this a little bit up direct into this increase the size here then increase the size here cool and then just bring it up a bit I think it's still rotated a little bit too much so I just want it to be able to not get inside that cool now all I need to do is increase this to 1300 and something plus like that there we go so now we're getting a little bit of a reflection so let's just go all right so we're getting this part and this part and this part which is really good so we're like we're covering so much already all right now all I need to do is uh, I need a little bit of this in here so shift V I'm just gonna go size it a little bit down than the other one and then I just want it to, to actually look here just a little bit I'm just gonna go to local there we go that's even better then just go down here just rotate it a little bit there and then I'm gonna make sure that this is not as high so just 500 would be okay cool now all I need to do is duplicate this and I'm just gonna go here let's put zero 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 and then put it up a little bit and all I need to do now is just scale this up a lot more cool you see that's why it's it was really important for me to not have the ship in the middle so that I can have a control over whatever is going on on the roof and so that the camera is not that far cool I'm just gonna go and bring this a little bit down yeah that works cool now the only thing is you can see here it's uh, I don't really have much down I don't really have much in the back so I'm just gonna go duplicate this put it down here somehow and then I'm just gonna go and 
grow this don't make it too much just make it a little bit close because i'm just trying to get a little bit from the bottom here and i'm just going to reduce this quite considerably here so i think just 250 is okay all right now the last one i need and this is just because i don't like my models to not be litten from the back because i like to have that little bit of wet shape minus 90 great and uh, just put this in the back all right and just turn this up a bit here cool so basically that's uh, that's all going on in here the one thing that i could add is just duplicate this if you deem it necessary is duplicate this and actually just rotate it this way but it's up to you and then you just drag this up here drag this up here again we're just trying to go for the mood that you want so you don't really have to follow this tutorial step by step exactly so you just go for the mood that you want and then you can just go to a 500 for example here cool so this is how you can light this now that we finish with the lighting all we need to do is get those orange tech hud so for the orange huds what i actually used to do because i wasn't very knowledge and blender so what i would do is i would create for example a plane and i'll just take the plane and let's just say we put it into 90 here 90 here and then what i would do i would actually go into the file and right click it and then I'll see whatever 1920860 for example here and then I would just go literally and uh, try to put the same thing and then I'll just go and put a 0 0.8 here that's basically how I did it in the beginning really that's that's literally what I did and then I would just go to this material here so I'm just gonna go and put let's just say the hot plates for example here and then I'll just get it there but that's not really what I want so I will just duplicate it and instead of having this one I'm just gonna go and bring in that particular one okay so then it's there and the only thing that I need to do here is I could just change this into for example I could just go and create create a color color here and then put it in the emission cool and then I'll just go and change this into orange okay and then the same thing for this one I'll just go and create it into orange and then if I want to have something funky I'll just create a little bit of a gradient so that it's it's very different cool and then I'll just put and place all this all these things around here shift D put this one here and then this one I will just duplicate and change into the next one that I had there and so I will go into something like this and then I will just have that thing there and then I would go and duplicate this one and then bring in the next and then the next thing and then the next thing we'll just try to lay as much details as possible so once that is done what I would do is I would go into the scene iron and I would just cut it so now I would just have and obviously I would just hide these from the camera and the render this one is not even in so yeah and then I would just render this because everything is black so it's with like with a mask as well and then that would bring me into what kind of output I have so normally I have combined Z mist and uh, yeah I would just have a little bit of normal and if I have some crypto mask I would just go to object and material and asset I would just have all this in cool and then what I would go is I would go to render render the image once the image is rendered and I want to save it I'll just save as and instead of having PNG I'll just go and put it into open EXR and then I'll be able to get all the passes cool so basically that's just how I went about creating this inside of blender my kind of tutorials I I'd rather convey to you how it's done by a step and then you can just go and duplicate the step just so that we can save time here all right that is all for this part one and part two tutorial of creating an FUI composition and style frame inside of After Effects and blender I hope you enjoyed the tutorial please do not forget to put a like button subscribe and notifications on to help me with the algorithm and make this tutorial reach even more people who are probably looking for this sort of tutorials. My name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo. I'll catch you guys on the next one.